Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat. Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis. Jehova Gadola, Makarian Tios. Jehova Yardanai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Penta Greta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Elda et Jehova, Yel Emona Jehova. I Basilion Kurios, Otios, O Penta Greta. Basilios Basilion Kai Kurios, Kurion. Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Jehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Imahagion Panta Greta, Gadol Gadol Gebura, Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim, Ille ila e shalot, Jehova Malak, Jehova Malak, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Jehova Elohenu, Jehova Ekad. Zan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol. Gebura. Ehova Ishmal Kam, Ehova Shamma, El Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa, Netzak Israel, La Sheker, Gava Gava, Triembos Yehova, Isus Christos, Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat Shaba. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing the present circumstances in the present Christendom in comparison to the Old Testament times, particularly from the first king called to be Saul, and the affairs what these people they could have with Damascus, as King Ahaz in Second Kings chapter 16 gets back the pattern of Damascus and goes to change the order of worship. And Saul, who has been desired of the Lord, the same desire what has been now kept for the church age believers. That everyone should be in the thought process of a disciple to the word of God. The same thing what Saul was. If you look into the pictographical representation for the word Saul. It represents the munching process of teeth followed by the lamad stick of shepherd. So the thought process of each and every believer ought to be a disciple as John 1, 11 and 2 emphasizes the point. But the way how Saul failed, exact pattern the church is doing more worse than Saul in failure. Dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and learn what God the Father has prepared and kept for us. 
on today's date in a treaty pass to the praise of his glory after this prayer. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of Lord to learn thy truth. We pray the mentoring minister of Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten into challenges by this message which are prepared and kept for us on today's date, to enlighten our life to the praise of your glory for eternity. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen. The word Saul, because if we have perfect love towards Lord God the Father, perfect love casteth out fear. And when there is no fear about anything on the face of the earth, we can reign in this life. First of all, the fear that we ought to tremble at his word. If that fear is abiding in us, it is a very great principle to look and diligently search every single iota and carrera of the word of the Lord. But today we find people who are not able to look diligently each and every part of the word of God. The word Saul itself who was the first king. We need to learn many lessons in that. The word desired. And from there the second king when Saul when when David was been anointed by Samuel on the road of 1 Samuel chapter 16. The word David is called to be beloved. Desired and beloved is something else. Beloved over here represents the thing pertaining to the two double D in the Hebrew. And this represents the breasts, the passion of having love which goes on to secure or give you that heat. Beloved, David, what we look has to be the church. But church, instead of becoming the beloved one of the Lord of God, church has become more worse than what it has been called over here to be desired. So here we look the word David, which is nothing but representing in the Hebrew, called to be as the word Dod file, Dod Dod. And this word Dod is nothing but the two danglers representing the woman's breasts, the part of the female body invoking heat of passion and love. You know, whenever Christ our Lord our God looketh upon David for the word beloved, which has to be the church, which has to be his wife. They haven't become like the aspect of a man following after Lord God's own heart. That's the point what I want to illustrate for you. The church indeed has been called to be the wife of Christ. But the church has utterly failed, though he has desired every believer to be a disciple growing up into Kramatias. Though he has desired every believer to reach and to have the confirmation of the image of Christ. Though he has desired to make everyone to have the same thinking of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Romans 8, 29, Ephesians 4, verses 13 and following. Though he has desired that each and every believer should have the same resurrection body of my Christ, but some are risen to condemnation and some are risen to eternal life. And in that sum we can call, we can say, many are called, but only few are chosen. Here we have something to learn, dear brethren, which is very, very important. The first king Saul, the way how God the Father, we could have referred that to the Israelites. He desired something of a great value and honor for God the Father on the face of the earth through the lives of the Israelites, what he has chosen, as he says in Amos 3. Living these people, I know not anyone on the face of the earth. He desired something from them. And they thought God the Father would be pleased to kill them in the wilderness. That's the reason he delivered them from Egypt. Constant murmuring, grudging, having no faith, having to be in the standards of not continuing to go on to be prevailing against any circumstances or persecutions, looking not that God the Father is testing them. But they analyzed every circumstances and in the viewpoint of circumstances they wanted to look God. 
but the never of God in the standards of every circumstance which has been planned by God the Father to make them to be the desired ones growing up into the beloved standards like David. Except eunuch and the gift of celibacy. You may not understand the word beloved as Doth goes on to say for David, where the woman, woman's breast could invoke you for love, for passion, for heat. Because every human being on the face of the earth follows the same cycle as the dogs when they are in heat. So looking upon you, God the Father should have that desire converted to be the beloved. But your desired word, what we find for Saul over here, in simple terms it emphasizes that your thought process should be all the time oriented to be disciples in the word of God. Therefore, if we look, the church age begin with the disciples. And yesterday we were looking from Matthew chapter 17, emphasizing the only, the, the only son of the father coming and asking him, this lunatics and evil emotion spirits, they're troubling my son. They're making him to fall into the fire. They're making him to fall into the water. And your disciples, they couldn't drive out that demonic spirits from him. And Christ, our Lord of God, comes to teach the lessons of life. You faithless and perverse generations, why you are having the unbelief? To overcome the unbelief, fasting and praying. Fasting in the sense not to let go the food. You don't have time on the face of the earth for any other work apart from learning the word of God. For that cause you fast out everything. You let go everything. You first come to graduate in the word of God, no matter what. That's the true fasting. And as First Thessalonians 5.17 teaches to us, make it a habit of prayer, all the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, making up our lives to seek, to search, and to do that which is the good pleasure of God the Father, good delight for God the Father, so that we desires could be the beloved ones in the sight of the Lord, invoking that passion for love. But as the uh, beloved ought to be the church, it has become more worse than the desired. If you would look the circumstances, because all the time people would love to analyze God in the viewpoint of circumstances, but not looking from the viewpoint of God every circumstance. If you would look the present situation, in comparison to the past dispensation of the Israelites, wherewith we are now sandwiched between the two advents of my Christ, the sudden halt of 69th week, and between the 78th week, we, the church, have been inserted. If you would look the past, the life example of King Saul, exact pattern of failure, even more great failure, for which cause? There were three years of famine in in Second Samuel chapter twenty one, year after year. And there we look for the reason why he slave by his servant the Ark upon eighty five priests who were wearing the linen cloth for Samuel twenty two. We read that account. And the way how he slaved them, the word of Lord God emphasizes, because of those men. The land has been struck with famine year after year, and David goes to inquire before the Lord, and the Lord God would give the reason it is for Saul. And the Gibeonites will come and they will ask the seven sons of Saul to be hanged. And because of the covenant between David and Jonathan, his son has not been given to hang. You know, here you look, the failure of the true work. First of all, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, destroying the Amalekites, which was the origin for the first time of Deuteronomy 25, the way these people, they rejected the word of Lord God. So God the Father, the way they rejected word of Lord God in the sense, they did not come to help. So after you become into the land of flowing with milk and honey, the word of Lord God says, destroy them, destroy the Amalekites. That mission was been failed by Saul. Second, in persuasion of David, in 1 Samuel chapter 22, he killed 85 priests who were wearing linen cloth. 
And these 85 men who have been slaughtered, because they were with David, they were associating with David, they were helping David. Because of that, when David has gone through the turmoil of his life in 2 Samuel 21, because after his rebellion, for once he said he's going to pay four, Nathan would come and reprimand David, and David says, who is that guy who has done such mistake in my kingdom so he says it is you the king so for once he's paying four times after the four times after his son absalom being rebellion we enter into joab and the person who's going to get back to the head that wise woman her name is not mentioned in the bible as the poor man whose name is also not mentioned in the bible because of his wisdom says ecclesiastes 9 he saved his land so this wise woman because of her wisdom consulting each and every one she could say to joab do not enter into the place i will throw you the head of the one who has made a revolt against king david So here the wise woman name is not been mentioned. There also in Ecclesiastes 9, the man of a poor man who has wisdom, who could save his land, his name is not been mentioned. So here this wise woman throws the head of the person who cut chopping off his head. He throws the head out of the wall and she protects that entire place. So here we look one example after this, entering into this lesson of Second Samuel 21, teaching to us three years famine by famine, and the reason is Saul. And today also if you would just look from the life of Saul, what he failed in First Samuel 15, First Samuel 22. In fact, he failed even in First Samuel 11 when his uncle asked, what did Samuel tell to you? He did not give him the entire detailed description about the king, what he would be to the people of Israelites. Even there it is a failure. Even in First Samuel it's a failure. First Samuel 22 it's a failure. And actually David should have set back all these things in straight. But David, because of Second Samuel 11, the Uriah and Bathsheba incident, he paid four times for his sin after paying him. And we learn a lesson over here, dear brother. First, as the high priest would go to the Holy of the Holy, first to confess his sins, then the sins of the people of Israelites, so is every believer first making his life straight with God making his relationship accurate with Lord God. Until and unless he could make his relationship accurate with Lord God, he cannot go to make others to look, to pray on behalf of them, though it's a great sophisticated weapon given for us as prayer, which is odd infinite light years away when we call Abba Father in heaven, because we are the adult sons of Christ in the spirit, not Napier sons being bondage to the elements of the world, but adult sons of Christ in the spirit, crying out Abba Father, putting to death the deeds of the flesh and growing on to be the righteousness of God. So having this great, much sophisticated weapon of prayer, calling Abba Father, it's the duty of each and every believer to be sanctified himself first, cleanse his sins, and then he can intercede for the sins of others. So here David paid his path four times, beginning with Tamar, his daughter, the way how she was being deceived by the same brother and she was being sent out, and then the, the, then the Absalom revolt. So four times he, pray, he pays. Now, when the thing pertaining to David has been ended up, he begins up with the famine for the reason what Saul has been done. The rejection of Saul's work, first we look in chapter 15, because he destroyed not the Amalekites. the first thing, what he has to do. There, God the Father makes him to be rejected from the king of Israel. The thing what has been given, he did not do, so it has been absolute failure, so God the Father rejected him. Now when we come for the sin, what, de, what, what this Saul does, the thing what he has been doing now, to kill the 85 priests of 1 Samuel 22, King David has been brought into an account to ask before God the Father because there was a famine year by year by year. And for three years it was a famine. And David is not able to analyze why that, why that famine has come upon them. So now he goes to the presence of God and Lord God the Father says it is because of Saul. 
The thing what Saul did as a failure in chapter 11 of 1 Samuel, again in chapter 15, we find paying back by his own life being rejected as king. And now, because of 1 Samuel 22, the thing what Saul has done actually should be paid back by David. But now we look in the time of David, the famine reminding the way how the things which the desired people haven't fulfilled, haven't done their work accurately, haven't done the things pertaining to the will of Lord God the Father, God the Father demands justification for the grace that has been given for them in that particular period of life on the face of the earth. Actually, David should have got back to it long back. But because of the sins of David, first confession of his own sins and then the sins of the entire Israel, the way how the high priest would do, David paid back four times. After paying back four times, now we can look back the way how David is asking in the presence of God the Father, why is this famine? And Lord God the Father reminds to him the reason for famine is purely because of King Saul. If David wouldn't have involved with Bathsheba and Uriah, the famine might have been come earlier and God the Father would have even sought out the issue of slaying out that 85 linen priests. But since David was also involved in the act of this sin, as First Chronicles 15 records in the life of David, saying that the thing what he has done displeased the Lord. The accept of this thing in Second Chronicles 15 it ought to be. Oh, sorry, First Chronicles 15. The thing what David did displeased the Lord. Because of that he paid four times, the time was being delayed. Why we are comparing the contrast between Saul and David? Saul is the desired. David is the beloved. Church is the beloved. Israel is the desired. But the church has become worse than Saul. That's the point what I want to illustrate. As King Saul rejected to obey the commandments of the word of Lord God, 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 23, church has become worst. Actually, church should be a man of the Lord God's own heart, fulfilling each and every command. Because for David, he said he is a man after Lord God's own heart. Now the church also ought to be a man after Lord God's own heart, but now not to be a slave, but as friend, John 14, 15 and John 15, 14. But yet... The church has absolutely failed. Failed in a way, though you have been given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They have been given the effectual work of the completed can of scripture in your hands. They have been told the enemies have forgotten the word of God and it's a time for you now to teach to the enemies the manifold wisdom of God so that Everyone should come to know what exactly is the word of God in this church age. They have been given such a great process of life. What is happening today? You people have absolutely failed in fulfilling the will of God the Father. So, in spite of giving to us the completed can of scripture, we, the church age believers, haven't been able to perform what exactly were the demands of the word of God as in the past they failed. So, dear brethren, here we have something to learn which is very, very important. David was being told to fulfill the will of God the Father. Sorry, Saul was being told, but David was called, he's a man after Lord God's own heart. So the church has been given now the privilege being to be the wife of Christ, to invoke that passion of heat by the two danglers, or the two breasts of a woman. But the church is not able to invoke that, far less it has been not even able to get well qualified in the moral standards of unbelievers. Because when we look the unbelieving attitude of coming to their respective temples, in particular my country India, you just look the way how these people, though they have weekly ones, the standards of the temples they visit, whether it may rain, and though it is a pool of water, the way they have, they just leave the slippers at home and they come to the temple because they have a determined intention to go to the temple. So they don't want to let go having a second thought, first let's wear the slippers and see, and if you're able to go, then we'll go, if not, we'll come back home, no. Having a determined thinking in their mind, first of all, to let go slippers, and second point, what they think it is purely because 
they have that respect to their gods respect your respect towards their gods so they let go the slippers and they come whether it may be a pool of mud a pool of water they cross and they go and they do their worship and they come back but today we find our christendom people are being so worse than thou because they don't even have this unbelieving standards of fear coming to the church every day coming to the church weekly once coming to the church and learn the mind of christ then how could we the church could be well pacified in the presence of god the father to say that we are well beloved of lord god no dear brethren we cannot be qualified over there so the beloved of lord god what we ought to be we haven't even been the desire of lord god by rejecting the word of lord god far less we aren't even been like the unbelieving men who could go to their temples every day or every week in the same pattern whether it may rain or whether it may be any process of difficulty but yet they would go to worship their gods and we are serving the true living lord of a god calling to be the temple of the living lord of a god in the church age as believers in christ and said to glorify god the father in this body through the spirit which indwelleth in us we fail abruptly before unbelievers because unbelievers no matter what they come to serve their god and they express their fear though we know it is no god though we know it is not an exact pattern though yet they go but we know the true god we know the true lord of a god we know the true purpose of christ but yet we have been absolute failures so are we like saul we aren't even been desired we ought to be like the beloved of christ the passion of heat the passion of love and we are nearing 2000 years from the resurrection of my lord by 2030 and yet we don't even find the desire of lord god the father to be fulfilled because the church haven't even reached the first stage of menarche as a girl or as a woman she would be reaching a womanhood when she is able to pass through that menstrual sickness a menstrual stage of cycles dear brethren we have to be very much ashamed you may be thinking that you have been really great in many of the things on the face of the earth but really dear brethren you ought to be ashamed when god the father looks into the passion wherewith he wanted them to be the beloved he wanted us to be the great pleasure giving god, giving men to god You know what the word of Lord God teaches for us in Isaiah chapter 14 the word which has been used for Lucifer halal shine satan doesn't be happy if you're having a pleasure of a disciple in your life and true pleasure for any man on the face of the earth it cannot be if he is not a disciple to the word of god there is no expression of joy in your life there is no expression of great thought in your life your body will express a great expression of joy provided you are a great disciple to the word of god so satan doesn't want that shining joy in your life it doesn't have that it doesn't want to be looking in you that joy that's the word lucifer being not there in the hebrew the word halal and the word meant to say if don't have the satan will not have an expression of joy if you are a disciple to the word of god but when he desired the jews through saul the first king they were absolute failures because they couldn't have a thought process to be a disciple to the word of god and that's very simple for us to understand and as long as you fail to be disciples god the father doesn't want you as a god the father doesn't want you to blaspheme the name of the lord but rather he wants you to be the disciples of the word of the lord so satan doesn't want you to be the disciples for the word of god and what does satan do to the best it goes on to give you all mannerism of entertainment because the greater your disciple oriented to the word of lord god the greater you're going to trample down satan under your feet 
The greater you have been well aware about the thinking of the word of Lord God, the greater you will be well qualified to the work of Lord God. So Satan knows very well if you have been well qualified in the work of the word of Lord God. You have a great joy. You are going to fulfill to be munching the process of the word of the Lord of a God every day. And as you go on to munch the process of the word of Lord God every day, you are going to trample down Satan under your feet. And Satan cannot even touch you. It cannot even have a process of having to introduce into you the fear. It cannot hinder you for anything. So the greater you reject the word of the Lord of a God, the greater joy is for Satan. Therefore, for default in the church age, dear brethren, every believer has been told, you are born as a technon in Christ, discipleship program in Christ. Why you have been given the privilege of becoming disciple in Christ? so that you can reach the standards of the thinking of the Lord. I mean, I've been growing up into discipleship program in the church age. You can easily overcome the thinking of Satan. You can easily overcome the details of this life. You can easily overcome because you will not have fear in you because perfect love casts out the fear. And Satan is not happy if you're going to become a disciple. Satan is not happy if you're not able if you're if you're if you're not able to grow up into the beloved of the Lord. Therefore it loves to it loves to hinder you. It loves to give you any replacement apart from the word of God on the face of the earth. It doesn't want you to be persuaded by the word of the Lord. Because the only drive, the strength, the force which drives you is the word of the Lord. And Satan doesn't want you to drive in the word of the Lord. So dear brethren, God the Father desires the church to be the beloved like David, a man, a man after Lord God's own heart following the will of God, fulfilling and going on to instruct each and everything what he has given. And that's why we look at great comparison, Luke chapter 4 and verse 6 through 8, which teaches for us particularly that when the fasting time of the Lord of a God, Satan would come after to tempt him after the fasting, saying that, just bow down to me, I will give you this entire earth. And Christ our Lord of a God says, get behind this Satan. You may think you have the exuse authority of you. But greater than that exuse authority, I will give to my men on the earth. That's what we have been said in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. The power is given unto us. That's the reason why this exuse authority has been given for us to go and make disciples of all the nations. So now through us, when we grow up into grammatius, when we reach the level of the thinking of Christ, confirming to the image of Christ, we can easily go and make disciples of all the nations. And that's how Satan doesn't want you all to be the disciples growing up into grammatia so that you could go and make disciples of all the nations. So it wants you to believe the lies. It doesn't want you to become a disciple. It's never happy if you're going to be a disciple to the word of God. You be a disciple for any other thing on the face of the earth, it could be very happy. But when it comes to the word of Lord God, it says, don't give them the word. Why, you know, you shall know the doctrine, the doctrine shall set you free. This is how the church has been rotten up today, dear brethren. It has to be the disciple. It has to be the real beloved of the Lord God, the Father in heaven. But it is not even like the desire of Saul. It is not even able to be like the unbelieving standards of men on this earth who love to come in spite of the rain or shine to come and to worship their God. It's a very shame thing for us to look. The true living Lord of a God, when he said, come carry your cross every day, follow me, you people are not even worried. And you know what? The blasphemy you leave behind on the face of the earth. Because of this blasphemy, you shall pay back, as the word of Lord God says over here for us in Leviticus chapter 24, the code which has to be very well understood. What is that code? The code of blasphemy. What action you have to take? He says in verse number, 
19. If any man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so it shall be done unto him. So what is the point over here, dear brethren? We read, what is that blemish? So we find over here in Deuteronomy 19 the same thing. I shall not pity you, but life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. Here we have a lot more descriptions. And what does he say? And the reason those who remain shall hear and fear, because this people, they haven't done what is good for the will of God the Father, so he shall pay in such manner. Now in Matthew 5.38 he says, You have heard it as it has been said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured back unto you, because the way have you sow that you reap, he says. And over here coming to verse number 20, breach for breach, that meant to say fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, has just caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. You know, what is that blemish you're causing? You're introducing in their mind defilement. That's the blemish. You're introducing in their mind that which is absolutely negative or that which is not worthy. And what could be anything on this earth apart from the thinking of discipleship program to be worthy? That's how Satan is not happy on your part. If you're growing up into discipleship program, Satan will never be happy. It never has that joy, but Satan will shine now with joy as long as you reject to carry your cross every day. Though you have been given this great exusive authority, what Satan claimed it has that authority, so that it could say, in the tempting of my Lord for those 40 days, 40 days after fasting, particularly for the second reason, what he says, you shall bow down only to the Lord of a God and none else than that. So here as well, Satan says, I have the authority. I can give it to whomsoever he will at this world. <laughs> and Christ of the Lord of a God says, for the mock of Satan, get behind thee, Satan. I know how to take this. And now we look in Matthew 28, the power given to Christ. He gives this great authority to make disciples of all the nations with the same exusive authority what Satan could think it can give to Christ. And we have been given that authority. And that's the reason we cannot be like the desired ones, but we ought to be growing up to be the beloved ones in the Lord. In one like 44,000 Jews, what we find in Revelation 7 in the ministry, what they work for the 70th week of the Israelites. At least maybe that time, God the Father could be pleased by the work of those one like 44,000 men, followed by the two witnesses. At least maybe that time he may be happy. We may find that those people were really beloved having certain men from the church who could have done the work of Christ, comparing to the glory of Lord God the Father to be filled on the face of the earth rather than walking an expression of Damascus in life. You know, today, people have been given the privilege to be indwelled by Lord God the Holy Ghost, which hasn't been given in the past. But people are not experiencing the road of Damascus like Paul, but they're experiencing the road of Damascus like Ahaz. We have this great context to learn over here. In Second Kings chapter 16, for this principle of Damascus, what you can find from verse number 10 and following, King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser king of Assyria, and saw there an altar that was at Damascus. And king Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it according to all the workmanship. You know, he has been so much impressed with that pattern of altar. Altar is a place where we have been called in First Peter 2, 4, to give our lives as a living sacrifice to the Lord. A spiritual house where we come to give spiritual sacrifices to God the Father. In First Peter, you have this word, particularly in chapter 2, in verse number 4, what we are. He says that, 
to whom coming as unto a living stone, dissolved indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, so that you also as living stones or lively stones, zoe life of stones, are built up a spiritual house on holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So we are going to give the spiritual sacrifices. It has to be upon the altar. Now over here, King Ahaz on the road to Damascus because we have 56 references about the word Damascus in the Bible. And the word Damascus, what you can find, the meaning of that word is nothing but silent is the sackcloth weaver. And over here, being silent, who is the sackcloth weaver, when we find in, in Acts chapter 9, we have a great reformation. And we ought to walk in the path of such reformation. We have to walk to become the beloved ones, to be greatly desired ones, or great beloved ones, or beloved, beloved ones of Jehovah. But we are not reaching ahead for great beloved ones of Jehovah, but rather we have been deteriorating from that beloved standard, not even to be fit like desired ones of Lord, but we have been called to be more worst than the heathen style of life. At least heathen style, they're showing respect to their gods for their respective standards. But we, serving the true Lord of a God, claiming to be Christ, claiming to be the followers of Christ, we don't have Christ in us. Tomorrow, dear brethren, the code of blasphemy, the law of blasphemy, the law of cursing. It says, if anyone would go to give you this dilemma of information, you have to fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, and you may be suffering in your life and you know not why it is, purely because you have given that sort of suffering through your mouth or through the thinking of your mouth to someone who hasn't known the true work of God, the true will of God, and the true power of God, and the true glory of God. That's why the time for us, he says in Colossians, Walk circumspectly, redeeming the time. The days are evil. You cannot walk like fools, says Ephesians 4. We have to wake up to do the will of God, proving that which is good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. We have to walk circumspectly as wise men, not as fools. That's why we cannot spread blemish. That's why we cannot fracture others. That's why we cannot have them the view of view, eye of eye. The same thing over here in this passage, if you would look, dear brother, and in Leviticus, he says in this word, chapter 20, particularly in Exodus 21, we have a greater description than this. If any mischief follow, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, strife for strife. You know, here we have only three things, breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But over here in Exodus 21, when he has given this code, if any sort of mischief that has been given or the thing that has been followed over there, that which is called to be sane, any pressure for anyone who is not able to really come back to Christ, if there is any hurdle by your side, maybe because of you, the unbelievers are not able to come to Christ. The power of that sane, he says, if you are a mischief fellow, you know, you people are not allowing the unbelievers. As I said, you have the keys. You have not entered, neither have made others to enter. You have the keys to enter into heaven by following the discipleship program of Christ. But you people have not entered, neither have made other unbelievers also to enter because of your hypocritical mask of life. So here he says, any mischief. The mischief over here is nothing but the things pertaining to hatred the pressures of life. And what pressures of life? Just look, you are not allowing your own church congregational members to come to the church. That is a mischief fellow. Far less unbelievers should come. That's why we have said, you have the keys, you couldn't enter, neither have made others to enter. The church is a universal point of view for all. No differences in the congregations, it has to exist. 
purely the failure of the pastor teacher to correct them from the word of God, you find favoritism from the committees and you divide the church, you spoil the church and you follow stupid rules made by man rather than God. The church membership program, if you would look, believing in Christ, sanctified and kept apart for the work of Lord God the Father, carrying you across every day and following my Christ is the sole purpose of membership, not the membership saying you have such and such circumstances in the political agenda or the agenda of favorism towards one committee. So dear brethren, here we look. The first point, mischief fellow, the fellow who has been able to not bear the pressures of life. The same thing over here, if there is any form of blemish that has been spread. And there he says, bridge for bridge, fracture for fracture, tooth for tooth, and eye for eye. The same thing over here, he says, the mischief fellow, the fellow who is able to not bear the pressure, but rather he has been all the time according to his own good pleasure to be performed. This mischief fellow who is like a thorn in the congregation like Achan, because of one man the entire congregation was called to be sinned and now they beat him with stones. Anyone who would blaspheme then today, how much of blasphemous, mischievous guys are there in our pulpits? How many men there are in our congregations who are not supporting the word of God, but rather they're supporting their own lusts, the lust of power, the lust of approbation, so we need to learn about these things, up to what extent these mischievous fellows are there, up to what extent the standards of blasphemous men are there, and the solution in Leviticus 24, it emphasizes the people who are having such blasphemous lives, they have to be stoned to death. And the people, well, they were in Egypt, the Israelites were excellent stone cutters. They went along even to rock, or if needed, to smite Moses and the other one Aaron because they were excellent chippers of the stones and they would know very well where to hit with the stone so that you could be put to death instantly. The way how even Saul was been there at the death of Stephen, not King Saul but Apostle Paul before Saul he was. And when Stephen would pray, Lord, do not account it for their account. He wouldn't have prayed for the forgiveness of those men like the things pertaining to the famine for three years would have come upon that land. Greater than that in Christ, O Lord of our God, for the first phrase, what people would love to talk on the day of Good Friday, it actually has to be Good Wednesday. The prayer, what they pray. Father, forgive them for they know not though what they do. If that prayer wouldn't have prayed, if David, time, in the time of David of Second Samuel 21, for those 85 linen-oriented men of priests, there was famine, then how much more for the Holy of the Holy One, when they crucified the Lord of glory, if you wouldn't have prayed that prayer, how we would be entirely faced on this earth to live. Do you think you would have any step to look upon? No, dear brother. When the year of Malcolm was been cut off by Peter, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, Wouldn't you know that if I would pray to God the Father, He would send to me legions of angels, which could just rampant man on this earth. Do you not think, when this Lord of glory has been crucified, for the first phrase what He talks, Father, forgive them, for they know not know what they do. We wouldn't have been born over here on this earth in respect of any genealogical line you would consider. You may think you have been bought by your such and such family. You have your hierarchical line. It goes back to the first Adam and to the first Eve. That's what how man has been made. Any other theory of evolution, just rub it out on the face of the earth. It's not worthy to think of. God created man. From there on, we find the great flood of Genesis 6. From there on of Shemham and Japheth of Noah flood. And then we find that we have been either the descendants of Shemham and Japheth and India comes in the standards of Ham. Sham and Japheth goes back to Greeks and to the Israelites. Shem goes to the Israelites. Japheth goes to the Greeks. Ham, we are the Indians. You can find your line from there no matter what. 
your life wouldn't have been survived. That's the point what I want to illustrate. If Christ our Lord our God wouldn't have prayed that prayer. Though he was not being stoned to that, and that's what people don't understand. What is the crucifixion? The Jewish law, when we could find a king over there in Acts chapter 19, sorry, Acts chapter 18, we need to learn this lesson. Because every word of Lord God has been much needed for us to expound. Since we are running short of time, we are not able to cover the things. But over here in Exodus chapter 18, we come across a king. Because when Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew, Jew, certain Jew named Aquila and Priscilla, born in Pontus lately, and they came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was in the same craft, he abode with them and wrought for their occupation. They were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was present in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads, for I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house uh, whose house joined heart to the synagogue. That meant to say it was near to synagogue, or it was to the border of the synagogue. So the Crispus, the chief ruler of synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed, and they were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in that night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt that thee, for I have much people in this city, so that he could teach them much doctrine. And then he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, of the Jews made insertion with one accord against Paul, and brought him to the churchman's seat, saying, This fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, this man, Galileo, the one called to be Unius Annius Galileo, the Roman proconsul of Achaia, when Paul was at Corinth in 53 AD under the emperor Claudius. So Acts 18.12, the reference what we are reading. He was brother to Jew to Jucius Anesius Seneca, the philosopher. Jerome in the Chronicle of Eusebian says that he committed suicide in 65 AD. Viner thinks he was put to death by Nero. That's the causes of his death. But here we find this man, Gallio, who has been called to be the under this emperor Claudius, before him the case has been bought. Now when he was about to open, Paul was been bought him to the judgment seat, and when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insertion with one accord against Paul, and brought him to the judgment seat, and saying, This fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. In verse 14, when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked leviness, O you Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. That means I would have supported you. Now he says in verse 15, But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look you to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. That means he drived out, he hussed them out. You know what the point why I want to illustrate over here? Because for everything there is a reason why God the Father instructs his instructions over here in the Bible. At the council of Roman Emperor, they would have put Christ, our Lord of God, to stone to death. Not to crucify like the Roman like the procedure of Romans, Ro Roman punishment, which was one of the serious punishment. The notorious killer alone would be put to death. When we find Barabbas and Christ, the men choose Barabbas, the son of Barsibas, rather than they would be choosing Christ. So who, what is the role of Barabbas, Abar Abbas, what you can call to be the father of, of, father of Abbas? You can look upon him, his character is the notorious killer. Such men were been usually hanged upon the cross, or they were until the point of death they would be put upon the cross. So here, when Gallio, this Julius 
person, the one over here, what we look, he says that this man who was been of Galio, he said, if it is a matter of you words, the Junius Annius Gallio, the Roman proconsul under this uh, uh, Emperor Claudius, this man, he says, if it is a matter of your God, if it is a matter of your names, if it is a matter of your things, you just look into it. But if it were any matter of wrong or wickedness or lividness, then I would look. The same thing would have been told by the remaining men who simply crucified my Christ, Pontus Pilate. So here, dear brethren, we look. They should be actually stoned to death. But here, the present Christendom is not able to realize when the things pertaining to other religion members, they want to talk and ask about the crucifixion. And they want to look and say, he was not crucified, it was crucifixion, they say, as if it is a fiction movie. Because if they were king, Galileo, who over here, he said, under that uh, Emperor Claudius, he said, it is not my matter. If it is a matter of injustice or wrong or any sort of lividness, I would have handled it, I would have bear with you, but it is not my matter. It is your matter about your law, your words, your name. So what would be the result for Christ? Actually, should have been stoned with death. But he wasn't stoned to death. You know how great blunder mistake these people that don't believe in Christ. You know, that shows purely the foolishness of man. Though the things have been crystal clear from the word of God, the same thing in Matthew 27, when we look into the wrong account for the servants, they hired the money and they said, tell, you, tell that the disciples took and went their body. We have that great account. Though the rocks been cracked out, though the graves been opened up, resuscitation has occurred, they came back and they told again to, Christ, to, to those people that he was Christ. They didn't believe. The incidents are so clear because people don't read all these things. And they just want to say crucifixion. It is not crucifixion. The reason why he was been there to die on the cross, for the things what he was been manifested long back to the prophets to be fulfilled. In Isaiah we look, in Deuteronomy we look. It is not the law of the Rome, it is not the law of the Jews. The law of the Jews is to stone them to death. If Christ our Lord of God wouldn't have prayed for the prayer, Father, forgive them. <laughs> we wouldn't have been here because for the rule of Saul's way to kill David in 1 Samuel 22, made 85 linen-oriented priests to put to death, to be slayed to death. How much more when they kill the Lord of glory, God the Father would keep any man on the earth? We have the illustration of that husband man. He thinks first he will send his servant, they kill him. Again, they will send one more servant, they will kill him. And then at last he will send his hair. And now the people of the land will think, we'll kill off this hair, what the owner could do. Now the owner comes, what does he say? He'll destroy them, he will throw them out. And he'll give them to the people who are producing the fruit. The same thing over here with us. If the prayer was been not prayed by God the Father, to for, for, by, by God the Son, to God the Father, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they did the first phrase on the cross. We would have gone long back for the prayer of uh, Stephen, for that prayer, what we would look, saying that Father, forgive them, and he's been kneeling, kneeling, he looks upon the heavens opened up, and at the right hand of God the Father, the Son being sitting, and that made Paul to really look upon the great incident on the way to Damascus. That made him to look and to understand by whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. He said, it is I, Christ, our Lord, our God. So he emphasizes the word. That if Stephen wouldn't have prayed that prayer, we wouldn't have noted how many people would have been dead over there again. Because 85 men, three years of famine. Today, you don't have that great man like Elijah in James 5. And we look, he prayed three and a half years, there was, no, there was no rain. And therefore, we find that great passage of 1 Chronicles 16, 22, Touch not my anointed. And today, the shepherds are not anointed ones at all. 
if not they are not allowed such sort of uh, rule of blasphemous things to happen in the church and therefore they still continue their way of life for the sake of this belly what testimony are showing forth for these unbelievers on the face of their dear brethren do you think the unbelievers will believe in Christ on behalf of you and he says any defilement any reason of this mischievous blasphemous work what these people they're practicing this mischievous blasphemous deeds what these people they're looking he teaches in simple words of exodus for this mischievous blasphemous works what these people they're practicing he emphasizes over here saying that you shall give life for life eye for eye tooth for tooth hand for hand foot for foot burning for burning the word burning is nothing but your brethren that which has been related to your discipleship program which you are not having that great great joy you know god the father has inserted certain party for his son's marriage in matthew 22 he would have given to you the best of the best but the people rejected that some said such and such some said we will have this work we cannot come some said so and so so now god the father invites the men who have been there on the wayside the on the highways they have been like the things pertaining to not having any they were like aliens enemies in the sight of god even they were also bought now but even in that the tragedy of a sad part is that a man who couldn't wear the garments of the wedding one we looked at into that incident of matthew 22 verses 8 through 12 But here the illustration what I want to tell for what you have been qualified for what you have been called you are missing it the Jews should have come they would have enjoyed that what has been prepared and kept therefore we find in first corinthians 2 the eye cannot look the heart cannot perceive if it were not by the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to teach to you great and deep things of the word of the lord if it were not by the power of lord god the holy spirit to teach to learn to make you up your eyes wouldn't have come to know so here over here burning for burning the hebrew word over here for burning is called to be kevia and the word kevia is nothing but your brethren that which is to be burned that which is like a blister that which could go to penetrate you know you don't have the blister or penetration of your life to show forth you have this burning on you and what is that burning they should have he says disciple oriented program grown up into grammatias that's what it is he says in exodus 21 in verse number 25 the word burning kevia is nothing but in the pictographical presentation saying that your body should have an expression of joy that you are a scribe if you are not the desire to expression of joy that you are being disciple of the word of god and satan cries on your behalf if you have been a disciple to the word of god the word halal what it shines is that it wants to shine in the light of this world to blind your eyes not to look the glorious gospel of christ as a false minister he says changing transforming themselves that's the word metaschematizoa we read that transforming themselves to be the disciples but they are not they are not the ministers of the word of god so what does it shine it shines in such a way that you forget the discipleship program and today if there may be any church on the face of the earth if they're not coming to teach the word of lord god every day they are really not been sent by the lord they are not been teaching the word for discipleship program these are not been anointed by the lord because satan halals it shines it shines to cause you to look darkness to be light it shines for you to come weakly once to the church it causes you to reject the discipleship program and since you have been in the program of discipleship being born in john 1 to 12 satan is successful in inventing its schemes inventing its fashions inventing its copulation point and producing false men and false teachers thus causing defilement of mischievous standards in this life and today you people are mischievous deceitful nature to the maximum and the law says stone them pelt them to stone and stones represent the word of god ephesians 2:20 through 22 stones represent as a witness as joshua says this is a witness christ our lord of god says these stones will cry out if you make the mouth of my shepherds or my disciples to keep quiet so stones represents the word of god with the stone meant to say according to this scripture according to this verse according to this standard by this prophet or by this apostle or by the law given by the moses he says you have been eligible to die to death 
and just look being surrounded to kill by a stone. In John chapter 8, when you look into that great chapter, verse number 1 through 8 and following, the woman who had been caught holder of adultery, first of all, did not get the partner. And then he says, if anyone doesn't be sin in you, put the first one to be the stone. And they know very well they are in sin because they could not get her partner with whom she was committing that adultery. And Lord God says, go and no sin more. He says, go and do no sin more. No, do sin more. No sin more. The greater you sin, the greater you're going to be into the death. And that as she's been healed, that as she's been converted, that as she's been absolutely shown forth her burning rites of memorial. But today you don't have that. Though the stones have been ready for you to pelt out. Though the stones have been given for you to look. Your blasphemous works, your blasphemous ways of life, your blasphemous ways of thinking. He pelts you, he says. And how is the reason of this burning? He doesn't find a great expression of joy in your body that you're like a scribe. And the people who are scribe-oriented having no fear because they have perfect love of Christ. And since they have a perfect love of Christ, they will be the beloved of God like David. But he says over here in Exodus 21-25, burning for burning and wound for wound. The word wound is nothing but your brethren, that which has been bruised. Why? Because you open up your mouth because of your pressure, according to the viewpoint of men, not according to the viewpoint of God. So you're causing them to be wounded. The third one, he says, strive for strive. The word kaber, what he says again back in Leviticus 24 in verse number 19 and 20, which has been used for shaber, which has been called to, which has been called to break up into pieces. The word is not shaber, but kabura. The word kabura over here, remember to say, that which has been built up as a wall of fortification, so that in your body, you are going to have that which has been reigning in your head. So that's strife for strife. Every time you go, you have, you have been just stuck up with a fire which has been putting a scar of a mark upon your head. That's strife because you have been taking up the decisions contrary to the word of God, but not knowing the word of God. And that's what he has said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? Because they don't have that great shepherd who is going to give them the word of God so that they could renovate, so that they could be free from the strife for strife. Therefore, dear brethren, here he says, these characters, number one, any mischievous, blasphemous fellow, first, life for life, soul for soul, eye for eye, second, tooth for tooth, third one, hand for hand, fourth one, fifth one, foot for foot, sixth one, burning for burning, because you don't have an expression of joy. The word sixth one over here is very very important because the the number of sent for man is six and now if it doesn't become a grammatious expression of joy in his body for sure he's going to be not worthy to be as a man on this earth because the number six demands man to be transformed from disciples into grammatias so here he says burning for burning the sixth one wound for wound the seventh one and eighth one stripe for strife the word wound for wound over here dear brethren meant to say as in the Hebrew, petsa. The word petsa over here, nothing but opening up their mouth because of the pressure that is happening in their viewpoint of life. So wound for wound, and then you have strife for strife. Strife is nothing but the wall of fortification where with your body thinks upon to be in the viewpoint of what we call, as this word says, as your head works on that, your thinking works on that, your body works on that. That's a strife for strife. And today we can find many strifes for us. So dear brethren, if there is any mischievous, blasphemous fellow in the midst of you, he says the same thing over there in Deuteronomy chapter 19 in verse number 21 which we read life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. This is the five things over here. In Leviticus he gives three things, fracture for fracture. The word fracture is enough. You just have a hair crack of a bone, you will understand what is that fracture. You're fracturing the, the salvation of the Lord. You're fracturing all the flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord, said the scripture. You're fracturing that which has to be filled in this earth, the glory of God the Father. Then if you fracture that, will you not think your life will be fractured? Your life will be shabbered up. Your life will be broken up into pieces. 
You may think truth for truth is enough, eye for eye is enough. No, dear brethren. In Leviticus, he says three things. In Deuteronomy, he says five things of chapter 19, verse 21. In Exodus, chapter 21, verses 23 to 25, he says another eight things. The number three, five, and eight. Three, Trinity, five, the grace of God, eight, the new creation. But you have to come out of all of these things by witnessing the truth. And how you have to witness the truth so that you could be the representative for other people, the things pertaining to Christ, the things pertaining to the glorious gospel of the Lord, shining forth in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations by holding forth the word of the Lord of our God in you. And how much of the life we have for this on this earth. And at these people, they don't learn about this, inc this, this, this incident. So in this great chapter of Matthew chapter 5, where the people would have a lot many things to talk. He said, let your communication, yes be yes, no be no, for whatsoever is more than this, it cometh from evil. You have heard it had been said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, that's what I, S for S and no for no. Because he says that, what is the truth in the Bible, preach it. Any other thing apart from that, it's evil. And people today, they are preaching blasphemous, mischievous, evil things in our pulpits. So he says, but I say unto you that you resist not devil, but whosoever shall, but that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn he to him and also the other cheek. If any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him also have thy clock. Whosoever shall compel thee to go to a mile, go with him too. Give to him that asketh thee, and for him that would borrow thee, turn not thou away. You have heard that it hath been said, You shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say now unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you. Because these are the principles which have been very, very important. The people who are going to insult you, the people who are going to use you abusively, the people who are going to give you as a great persecution. He says that you may be the children called to be the adult sons of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on evil and as well as on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For you love them which love you, what reward you have, do not even the publicans do the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than the others? The word salute meant to say over here, dear brethren, for the Adolphus, he says, the point of as pamazao, or to draw oneself to bid welcome. Then do not the even publicans do, be you therefore perfect, again the word telelios, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. So he begins the conversation over here in verse number 37, emphasizing the point, let your communication be S yes, if it is S, yes, be no if it is no. And apart from that, any other communication which you're thinking, he says it comes from evil. So dear brethren, how much of your life you are defiling not even to conform to the unbelieving standards of this world in their morality, in their fear towards God, whether it may rain or shine, they come to the temple the day. Because you are called not to be the desired ones of the Lord, you are called to be something beloved ones of the Lord. If you are the beloved ones of the Lord of a God, no matter whatever it is, as it says in Philippians 1 verse 25, the great persecution what he has. For me to die and to be with Christ is a great benefit, but to live in this flesh, it's for your sake. And he says, having this confidence. What is this confidence? To be persuaded by other men, yet they may persecute me. I will not make that persecution to happen because I live for Christ and die for Christ. So he says, no matter what, I will prevail that persecution because I know I shall abide and continue with you all for the furtherance and joy of your faith. Having an absolute confidence that he shall continue with the Lord of a God every day. Having an absolute confidence that he shall do and perform the will of God the Father every day. So dear brethren, he says, What is the labor of my flesh? To trace out the untraceable riches of Christ. That is the furtherance of Christ what we have. So he knows that he has that confidence, he has to do his work, he has to continue in his work. He cannot reside in silly things, stupid things of this earth. Just to think what he can do, what he cannot do, how he can do, where he can do. 
because analyzing all the time God according to the circumstances. Because you're, you're jammed up in a jam, you want to look and analyze God in that circumstances. No, dear brother. Always look God who has been given you those circumstances to come back to believe in Christ and perform the will of God the Father. Believe upon those circumstances in the Lord. So he says over here, for the furtherance of joy, I will reside in this flesh. And as long as you reside in that flesh to perform the furtherance of joy of God the Father, dear brother, and the word of Lord God teaches to us, as the mind of Christ emphasizes, that Satan called to be the Lucifer, Halal, the one which goes on to shine, if you are a disciple oriented, the shining of Satan will be reduced. The burning in your life will reduce when you have been a grammatius in the Lord. And not just as a grammatius, you have to grow up from grammatius into the level called to be cherubim level of thinking in Christ. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more? If you're not even able to make up your life to be and to look like the standards of at least unbelievers in my country, India, they are really great. The fear and awe of expression they show towards their gods, though they do not know they are not gods. The fear, the care. And though we serve the true living Lord of our God, we seldom take care of the words which has been given for us to abide in His principles. A true pastor teacher passes by. The unbelievers know very well how to respect him, though the believers not even know how to respect them. So, dear brethren, you're called to be the beloved of Lord God, not to be the desire of Lord God like Saul. And Saul left the fact of life to become having in his mind the munching process. So he sinned in 1 Samuel 15, again in 1 Samuel 22. And because of him, the great wrath of Lord of God abideth on those people. But the people are following the path of Ahaz in Second Kings chapter 16, making up your pattern rather than following the pattern of Apostle Paul when he emphasizes, I look Christ and I follow him so you look me and you follow me. On the way to Damascus, we find a great expression of his life in, first, in Acts chapter 19, teaching to us that he did not eat and drink the food for three days on the way of Damascus and he got to look and to came straight the way when his scales of his eyes were fallen to preach Christ being baptized because he knows very well the word of Lord God accurately. He preaches Christ. And if it were not by the prayer of Christ of the Lord of our God to forgive us, or even Stephen to forgive them at that time, maybe the progeny of man wouldn't have been here on this earth. Because when he couldn't spare for 85 linen-oriented priests the sin of Saul, how could, we, how could he spare the sin of man by crucifying the Lord of glory like the way in that husbandman, husbandman parable when they killed his own son, he comes to destroy them and he gives them to those who are going to produce the fruit of the Lord. So being thankful to Lord God the Father showing up His grace by the words of the first phrase on the cross. How much we have this great lesson to learn. And being thankful to the will of God the Father how many days more. We shall still walk in vanity thinking we can achieve great many things, lot many things. But walking contrary, what is the great pleasure you have at the end of the day today? Just look in your account. You have earned some money, you have earned some respect, you have earned some name. <laughs> or have you filled this earth with the glory of Lord at least a little one ounce? Because drop by drop, when accumulated, it becomes a great ocean. Daily one drop of glory to be accounted for your account. Because you are called to be the beloved of Lord God. A man who would fulfill the, all the pleasure of his will, he said, for David, now we are not just to be the friend of Lord God, but we are called to be the wife of Lord God. 
growing up to the process of friends into his wife, then how much more we have to add day by day, the beloved nature of Lord God to be fulfilled, as the two danglers, the two breasts of a woman, will make the man to have pleasure, so it is, the, igni the ignition of passion of love and heat, the same thing with is with Christ when he looks into the church, the sad part is the church haven't reached till now, the stage called to be. Menarche, so that we can show for there is a growth, we can show for there is a sign. You know how the, the things pertaining to the breasts of a woman till she could pass through that adult age or women or, or a woman would she doesn't grow her breasts. That's what you can learn from your anatomy of man, of woman, whatsoever it is. Menarche is not reached. Christ, our Lord of a God, is not able to look your menarche far less he can see the growth of the breasts of the church. So that he can call you, my beloved is mine and I am hers. You are not even worthy to be like the unbelievers of my country, India. The way how they show their respect towards their gods. You are not even to be the desired ones like Saul, who should have been in the past for the Israelites. And yet, how many days more, dear brethren? You need not want to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine to look and to thoroughly understand. Satan is shining when you are not a disciple, and Satan is into depression when you are a disciple to the Word of God, because Satan knows very well the command given for us is to trample down Satan under our feet. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, and the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large, and which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Because our communication, if it is yes, let it has to be yes. If it is no, it has to be no. Any other thing cometh, he says, it is of the evil. And if you are not able to give a right information, God the Father would call us mischievous, blasphemous fellows. And he is going to ask the eight things. In Leviticus 24, he says three things, beginning with breach for breach, tooth for tooth, eye for eye. In, in Deuteronomy 19.21, he claims hand for hand, again foot for foot, added two more things. Things. Again, when he come for Exodus 21, he asks eight things. Besides that, burning for burning, wound for wound, strife for strife. He goes on to increase the demands, if you are not becoming the disciples of the word of the Lord, to communicate accurately the mind of Christ. And at opening up your mouth, it has to be divine oracles, being seasoned with salt to the grace of the Lord of a God. How is it you want to die, sin unto death, without knowing these facts? Think over these issues, and which way you want to be, you can decide, because we are not against your will or volition. Everything you give, it has to be a free will to the Lord, not by force, nor by might. So think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, glorious, divine grace. So with our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order of the telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Where with you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn down. Herald the word in season or of sin, because the diamond to my witnesses, where you have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in the Trinity, for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature. The entire angelic course will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. Because life is too short to waste the grace of God in vain glory. Let your SBS and let your no be no, apart from that any other thing which you love to proceed. He saith, it cometh from the evil, and for that cause you shall pay, from breach to breach, to strife to strife. The, the, the three things in Leviticus 24, five things in Deuteronomy 19.21, and in uh, Exodus 21, verse 23 to 25, the eight things.
So from breach to breach, fracture to fracture, why you want to pay strife to strife, but rather being beloved of Lord God, why can't we become great beloved, greatly desired one of Lord God, to be his favorite wife in producing the character of Christ in us? So dear brethren, think over these issues. As the face of the earth, wife will not let go the word of her husband, the church also had to produce the character of his wife. If you are not producing the character of a husband called to be the church, then we don't have any meaning or purpose. Though Christ our Lord of God prayed for us, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they do. And though we haven't been annihilated or put to death, yet you survive on this earth by not producing the proper fruit of the will of God the Father. What is your life on this earth? Think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great and privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship with Thee through the Word. It's a great grace on our lives, O Lord, to access Your Word, to understand Thy mind, and to have fellowship with Thee day by day by digging and taking the Word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic to learn, to know the solid truth, the great truth from Your Bible. So, Father, being thankful for this privilege you have given for us on today's day to accumulate your data, I have one drop of the glory to be filled to the become a great ocean on this earth to cover us as the knowledge of the Lord of our God covers the oceans. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.